engine. 3, 23, and 29, and last 33, apartment fire, 66, 16, yay. Okay, I had to backtrack a little bit. I was filming and talking, and I did not realize that this window was actually off the camera screen. So I'm going to go ahead and start back, I think, where I left off, which was basically the command uh, to get GQRX fired up, which is right here. Let's put this behind us, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you've got to do is click on this little icon right here and you need to choose your input device. This is something you only have to do the first time. And I don't remember what the default was. Um, mine is a RTL SDR, so made by Realtek. So here's mine right here. Yours should look similar. You're going to pick the RTL based on whatever RTL you have. So I'm not sure exactly what you're gonna see here. If you have a RTL SDR, you should see something that looks similar to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And really from a Input standpoint, I am not going to be making any other changes. Here's the audio output. I'm not going to be making any changes there. All right, so one thing you're going to notice is there are three different tabs over here, and you also have to keep an eye on the fact that you've got a horizontal scroller right here. Starting with input controls, because we're not going to do with anything with this quite yet. We're going to get back to frequency correction uh, after we get things fired up. Next is receiver options. This is... Uh, filter width, filter shape. I don't really even know what these two things do. I don't ever mess with them. For the mode, I'm going to teach you a better way of dealing with the uh, bandwidth mode. So I'll just leave it there. Uh, and then the squelch is set way too low or high, whatever. I'm going to take my squelch and take it back to negative 50-ish. All right, so FFT settings. This is where you're going to make some changes. Okay, so I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2. I believe 8192 is the default, but I don't remember. That might require too much computing power on the part of this little Raspberry Pi, so I'm gonna cut that in half to see how it does. This is the rate in frames per second that the waterfall flows, so I'm gonna kinda of take that down to maybe 15. Time span I'm gonna leave at the default. All right, so I think I've made all the changes that I need to make, and now for the drum roll, and uh, hopefully this will work, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Start DSP button, which is going to start uh, transmitting. Wow. So if it does that, turn your gain down. Actually, all right, so we're going to just turn it up to where it's not too, too, too obnoxious. So as you can see, we're looking at everything from 161.8 all the way to 163.2, so um, pretty wide area of bandwidth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use this horizontal scroller. See this frequency zoom? I can zoom in. And as you can see, we're getting tighter and tighter and tighter on this channel right here, which is 162,475. And this right here, this waterfall is showing you over the course of time with this being the most recent going back in time, it's showing you via different colors what's happening on that particular channel. So. Another thing that I want to show you is this cursor that I have right now is an arrow. If I mouse over the red line, it becomes two horizontal arrows. I can left click and drag and change the station that way. All right. But more important is if I mouse over the edge, I can start changing the bandwidth. If I left click, I can pull and I can get more or I can get less. So what I try to do is I try to match the bandwidth to the color that I see in the waterfall, and I should start hearing a signal. The pressure was 29 so, okay, but not great. At Gastonia, it was mostly sunny. Worse. The temperature was 84 degrees. At Monroe, it was mostly sunny. The temperature was 84 That's degrees. That's about the best we're going to get for At this Rock weather Hill, station. It was mostly sunny. Now I can mess with the gain here. Degrees. Elsewhere in and I can go to input controls and I can mess with the gain here too. See how that changes? That's going to change. I think this gain changes the sensitivity of what I'm seeing here. Okay, so on the FFT settings, which is where you're going to probably be making a bunch of changes, uh, you can see how this impacts over here. This 
makes the, I guess they call it the pan adapter, smaller. And here it's going to make the waterfall smaller. So whatever your preference is, I usually just cut it right down the middle. If you want to detect your peaks, you click the uh, button here. All right, so this this pan db, this pan db right here. If you pay attention to the numbers over here, it's going to make those change. It's going to increase and decrease what you're seeing. For my purposes here, I kind of like the way this looks right here. I'm not looking at too wide of a span over here, and yet I'm keeping my highs and lows all within visible sight right here. And then this is the zoom, which is going to allow us to see many, many more frequencies, but the detail of which we see is going to be far less. So when you start kind of locking in on the station, you can zoom in. That makes it worse. I just mess with the bandwidth a little bit here. And then of course the gain is gonna it's gonna change the volume. Alright, so turning the gain down, I'm I'm on the input controls and I want to show you uh, how to do a frequency correction. So we're gonna go to a frequency of 470.309. And I want to show you something. Now, before you do this, you're going to want to give your SDR a chance to get a little hot. Give a good solid five minutes. Now, essentially, what this 47309 does is it shows you, my dongle thinks it's on 47309, but look, I'm actually missing 47309. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my frequency correction. And as you can see, taking the numbers up is actually making things worse. And if I come back to zero, and oh, let's see here, there's negative one, there's negative two. I'm pretty much, so what's better, negative two or negative three? I don't know, let's zoom in a little bit more. I'm zoomed in pretty good. So basically what this does for me is with my frequency correction, so now I'm reading I'm reading 47309 and I'm actually on 407 or 47309. So now when I go to other various stations that I find in either radioreference.com or or any other source, when I dial into a station, I'm actually on that station instead of missing that station by, you know, a couple of megahertz, which is which is enough to uh, um, get you frustrated in the fact that you can't really hear stuff. And one thing I forgot to mention is that this 47309, if we zoom out, you'll see that it causes, let me get off of it, it causes a spike that's higher than anything remotely close to it. So I learned that that is a great, that is a great frequency to, uh, to do your tuning with. So next I'll show you what a... Uh, Show you what an FM station looks like. You can see the bandwidth on an FM station is just huge. Um, and I'm zoomed all the way out. If I were to zoom in, there's zoomed in. And let me zoom out. And as you can tell, we're hearing static because my bandwidth isn't correct. So if I zoom in a little to where I can grab, I gotta zoom in enough to where I can grab the handle. Or I can, you know, this is a good example of where you can go to uh, uh, here and do WFM, which will change the bandwidth for you. And now we should be able to hear. We can hear the station here. So there's the FM station right there. Um, there's another FM station right there. So you can see from the standpoint of how wide the bandwidth is on the FM stations. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this down. So now, uh, I've done some reading lately um, on the RTL SDR website. They were talking about this band right here and this band right here. Um, if you're familiar with the digital HD stations uh, that are alongside of your regular FM stations, that's what these are right here. I think somebody's working on a way to decode these. Right now, doesn't sound like much. Um, another thing I can show you is uh, if we get into the 853 range. So if you've watched my other videos, um, 
you know that this is a very busy part of the spectrum uh, where we've got a lot of digital communication going on. And a lot of this is, uh, uh, especially in this particular range, is, is digital trunking. So hopefully I'll be able to um, figure out a way to listen to trunk messages on, 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 on this Raspberry Pi. Let's see what we got here. They're not all. Here's an example of a, probably a P25 digital signal. You'll see that it does not sound like much. Let's see what we sound like here. That is most likely a fixed digital trunking uh, station for a P25. So on this one I had to adjust the squelch, bring it up a little bit, or bring it down. Well, I poked around up and down the dial looking for uh, some ham conversations and some other stuff that would be interesting for you guys to listen to, but it is very, very quiet out there. Um, so in short, what we've got here is uh, GRQX working really well on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, at this point, this is only capturing analog uh, information, so it's similar to our old analog scanner. Um, I am going to research and look into seeing if it's possible to uh, pick up uh, trunking conversations uh, and also if it is possible to uh, decode digital and see if we can't turn this thing into a completely portable digital trunking scanner. So I'm Steve, getting ready to sign off here, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe. I'm going to be tinkering with uh, RTL and Linux on this Raspberry Pi more in the future, and I'm hoping to learn some really cool things and share them with all of you. So subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Just make you aware, I've got an intoxicated female Mount Gallant Road, Twin Lakes Road, headed towards the fire department on foot.